It is August 18th, 2022, and you're watching The Code Report. One of the most difficult decisions of a front-end developer's life is choosing between front-end UI frameworks, because once you get jumped into a gang, it's really hard to get out. But what if there is a way you could be a part of multiple gangs at one time without causing a bunch of complex drama? Well, that's just one of the amazing things that Astro does, which is a tool for building multi-page applications that just hit version 1.0 a few days ago. I made a 100-second video about it a while ago, but it has some really interesting new features and deserves a second look. At a very high level, it's kind of like a static site generator that allows you to write content and markdown using the file system for routing, then renders it all as a static, multi-page application. For templating, it has its own language called Astro Components, which feel very nice and familiar to the modern front-end developer. What's really interesting, though, is that you can bring in your favorite front-end framework like React, Svelte, Vue, and so on, and it will render the UI on the server while shipping zero JavaScript to the browser. JavaScript is the main bottleneck for performance, which means with Astro, you get really fast page loads while using your favorite JavaScript framework or multiple frameworks at the same time. But you might be wondering, how does a component work if it doesn't have its JavaScript with it? The answer is it doesn't. It's just static HTML by default. However, if you do need interactivity in state, you can opt into JavaScript as needed to add islands of interactivity to your website. From a developer's perspective, Astro provides a variety of directives that determine when to hydrate or load the JavaScript for a component. If you want to load it right away like normal, you use client load. But if you don't need the component to be interactive right away, you can also use idle to wait until the browser's just chilling, or visible to wait until the component comes into the viewport. Under the hood, Astro is using a technique called partial or selective hydration to render components in place as opposed to taking over the entire DOM. That's a huge deal when it comes to performance. Less JavaScript to run means faster page loads and better time to interactive scores. That's awesome, but Astro can do many things beyond the typical static site generator. Like Next.js, it can statically generate dynamic routes by allowing you to define a get static paths function. However, if you don't want to pre-render all your pages, it can also handle full server-side rendering. That means your pages will be generated at request time, and it's also possible to have dedicated API routes. But with full SSR, it needs to be deployed to a server and can run on Node.js or the Edge, using platforms like Cloudflare, Netlify, Vercel, and so on. Now, as much as I love Astro, if you watch my recent video, the one limitation I ran into is that it's not possible out of the box to do client-side routing. It's different from something like Next.js that does full hydration, where the client-side router takes over after the initial page load. With Astro, you get an entirely new page for each navigation. That could be an issue if you plan on sharing data or state between route changes. However, I discovered there is a project called Astro SPA that addresses this exact issue, although it's not yet a stable part of the framework. I also made a meme framework to help with this, and shout out to everybody who's contributed to make that library better. If Astro does get the ability to work like a single page application at some point, it would really become the ultimate framework because it would cover every single use case on this flowchart. And not only that, but you could use any UI framework you want. At that point, it could put an end to the great JavaScript framework wars, and we could go back to building apps in peace and harmony. When these rich companies wage JavaScript framework war, it's us poor developers who die. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.